Hi, beautiful people. So today we're gonna do something special. Oh no! I'm gonna respond to a response of one of my response videos. A topic that we do majorly disagree on is birth control. Paul and Morgan put out a video called Christians Rethink Using Birth Control. And this honestly sent me into such a frenzy that I had to calm myself down before shooting it. We are revisiting birth control. <sighs> My main issue was that Paul and Morgan made what was essentially an anti-birth control video and the following week made an ill-informed anti-choice video. From my perspective, these videos were important to refute because family planning is a huge deal. When Christians spread misinformation and shame around the issue of reproduction, it can result in what some women consider the most painful decision of their lives. Over 70% of termination clients identified as Christian at that time. Side note, I'm going to avoid the A word because YouTube demonetizes creators for using certain language. I wish I didn't have to censor myself, but that is the state of sex ed on YouTube as of right now. Anyway, people often accuse me of being pro-termination, but in reality, it is my heart and passion to prevent terminations. When people are given fact-based, comprehensive sex education and access to birth control, termination rates drop drastically. Also, the more I've grown in my understanding of intimacy and spirituality, I really have begun to see lovemaking as an act of worship. It is literally procreative in that a baby can arrive, but it also creates deeper love, intimacy, and connection. If you think about it, when the church calls birth control immoral, it actually risks turning lovemaking into an elitist pleasure. This idea implies that Kim Kardashian and Kanye West can go off and have all the sex that they want because they have the financial provision to raise tons of children. Whereas I, in my one bedroom apartment, would have to abstain from lovemaking much more frequently because I can't afford baby after baby after baby. And yes, I know natural family planning is a great option, but if you are in a situation where having a baby would put you into poverty or cause a dire situation, another birth control option, though not foolproof, could make you more confident to enjoy that intimacy with your lover. And we can get into all of this more deeply because this week I'm going to respond to Catholic YouTuber Lizzie Answers response to my response video. But next week, her and I are going to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm sure you all know how excited I am about this because I consistently ask people of different points of view to please have a conversation with me. And I get turned down almost every single time. But Lizzie said yes. Before we dive in, today on the God is Great podcast, I brought back our number one most downloaded guest, Jamie Lee Finch. In our last conversation, we talked politics, hell, and how to heal from religious trauma. In this episode, we'll be discussing permission and agency. In other words, when you've decided it is high time to heal from purity culture, from religious trauma, Jamie and I will walk you through the steps you can take to regain that personal autonomy and enjoy sex the way God intended it to be. So search the God is Great podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, and more. Now back to Lizzie Answers. Lizzie first called me out on being less than charitable in my approach towards Paul and Morgan. I've watched other videos on Paul and Morgan's YouTube channel and they actually encourage couples to not have sex outside of marriage. In retrospect, I did respond to their birth control video from my personal point of view versus the lens that they were really speaking from. I think that Brenda's coming into this assuming that their audience is having sex outside of marriage. Paul and Morgan are coming into this with a sexual ethic where sex belongs in marriage. And that noted, it's not outlandish or even necessarily irresponsible to encourage married people to have babies. Inspiring other Christians to trust in God is is a main tenant of our shared faith. However, I believe that being a YouTuber, especially poising yourself as an educator or someone that people can come to for advice, that is a great responsibility and you have to take it seriously. Taking that seriously requires that we educate ourselves, that we try to look at things from multiple points of view, so that we're not just giving black and white answers that only serve our personal lives, that we're bringing information and nuance to these very huge topics. So, I can't tell you you how deeply I appreciate Lizzie actually acknowledges the reality that oftentimes our nation is more pro-birth than pro-life. It is horrific, audacious in this country how expensive it is 
to have a baby. Our country is not pro-life, it's not pro-baby, when it is this expensive and unrealistic to have a child. I know the phrase pro-birth may trigger some more conservative viewers because it sounds like a liberal talking point, but the reality is that over 70% of termination clients cited money problems as their sole reason for making that choice. And many of those clients already had children that they were struggling to support. And here's a tangent from my own experience experience. After getting pregnant, I realized to my horror that my insurance policy required that I pay a minimum of $6,000 plus 40% of all services up to $120,000. My checkups, my birth itself, were about to put me into some very serious debt. Lizzie's solution to this takes the weight off the woman alone. When a woman gets pregnant, they need to do a DNA test and start charging the guy who got her pregnant to be paying for the prenatal appointments and paying for the birth. It's this insane burden on women. It is true that technically that $6,000 to $120,000 debt would be on my shoulders alone as the woman, but if my partner goes into debt over our baby's birth, we are swimming in that debt together. Story's not over. Thank God I qualified for aid and the baby's birth was covered. However, almost immediately after Valentine was born, I disqualified for that aid, which meant I wouldn't be able to attend my follow-up appointments. This means after I pushed out a baby, when I could barely walk, when I was bleeding profusely every single day, our system is set up so that my body, my health, became irrelevant as soon as I had the baby. All politics aside, that is effed up. And if you think women aren't weighing that reality when choosing whether or not to have a baby, you are wrong. And if you're upset about government aid, if you believe people in need are lazy and unmotivated and just out to bleed our government dry, then consider my former insurance policy. I worked like crazy, chose a policy I could afford, and was still liable for up to $120,000. The stark reality is that a lot of people choose termination due to our failed healthcare system. Until American healthcare is fixed, adding a baby can be financially devastating. Which brings us to another great point of Lizzie's. Did those in poverty not pray hard enough? If your child can't afford the school lunch, is it because you didn't believe in God's provision? Now, I absolutely agree here. I think that the Paul and Morgan video is almost veering towards the prosperity gospel. We need to be really careful and not wound our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who are in poverty and make it seem like if you are in an economically disadvantaged situation that God isn't blessing. The prosperity gospel can convince the privileged, people like me, that our privilege is God's provision. But loving Jesus does not protect people from poverty. Those with more don't have more due to our faith alone. Which brings us to Lizzie's next call out. And this part made me laugh because dang, she's right. Telling your audience God will protect them from their own ear responsibility is like telling people not to wear seatbelts because God will protect you if you're in an accident. Whoa! Why are we suddenly comparing pregnancy to dying in a car crash? Instead of life ending horrifically in a car crash, life is beginning in the most beautiful, enchanting, amazing way. No more seatbelts, no more chemotherapy. Now she is comparing a baby being conceived to having cancer! I was shooting these videos while pregnant and I still compared having kids to fiery car crashes and cancer. I will humbly admit that is a sad and pretty weird way of looking at having children. But again, the reason I made that comparison is because I've heard the stories of women. Even though babies themselves are epic and wonderful, if you're financially vulnerable, if you have an abusive partner, if you're a victim of assault, becoming pregnant can feel that dire. I advocate for pregnancy prevention because I don't want people to suffer. And I prop up abstinence as the go-to because yes, that is the only way to 100% prevent pregnancy, unless you're Jesus' mom. Statistically speaking, it is not a reality that people, even Christians, will abstain from sex. Therefore, I do get upset when religious people call birth control outright immoral. So let's step away from the termination aspect and move on to Lizzie's thoughts about birth control. I applaud Paul and Morgan so much that as Protestants, they were able to figure out and just intuitively feel by realizing that you're not surrendering all of yourself to God if you do use birth control. God works through science. He works through the biology of sex. And so it is his will for pregnancy to happen when a couple has sex. It is not his active will for people to be having sex 
outside of marriage and outside of a situation in which they're willing to bring a child into the world. Purity culture brought a lot of deep pain to myself and a lot of you in the God is Great community. So lists of boundaries and fear-based courtship practices are always going to make me cringe. But the more I learn about sexuality, the more I align my spirituality with my sexuality, the more important sexual ethics become to me. In my life, sexual ethics are not about lists of rules or even saving sex for marriage. But in my process of honoring sex, as my sexual ethic grew, my dating life reflected that. But they would be the kind of man to realize, if I have sex, pregnancy is a possibility. That they would be of a high enough caliber that they would take care of that child. I can't wait to learn more from Lizzie about Catholicism because I am in the dark on a lot of it. But I do know that they are against birth control. Their belief is that sex is inherently procreative and therefore when we engage in sex we should always be open to creating life. So from what I can tell the place where Lizzie and I really part ways is in her honor and adherence to church tradition. If you look at church tradition from from the very beginning, Christians have always been against birth control. I believe she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, Lizzie honors church tradition because she believes that Jesus came to plant a church, that his purpose was to establish Christianity. The reality is that when Jesus was on earth, he started a religion. He appointed the apostles who created the church. Jesus did not give us a Bible. He did not give us a list of morals to follow. He gave us a church. So again, this is where Lizzie and I part ways. My belief is that Jesus didn't come to start a church or religion, that he was actually a living, breathing manifestation of God's heart for his people. In the Bible, I see Jesus resisting organized religion, choosing instead a nomadic life where he spread love, and he battled religious leaders over their oppressive ideas. So I'm reading some quotes from this book. It is called The Fathers Know Best by Jimmy Aiken, and it has some quotes in it of church fathers actually talking about birth control. And it reads, to have coitus other than to procreate children is to do injury to nature. I mean, I think y'all know I am sex positive. That does not resonate with me spiritually. I resist conflating Catholic men's interpretations of scripture with Jesus himself. And I definitely wouldn't perceive it as infallible. And call me a crazy feminist, but it is true. I do not like men telling women what to do with their bodies. I felt so scared and uncomfortable and nervous and violated the idea that when I am married I could get pregnant without intentionally wanting to get pregnant. I am not going to assume across the board every religious leader in Catholicism was coming from a dark patriarchal place. But historically speaking, it's worth considering that as a possibility. Autonomy is a basic human right that God himself honors. We each have the gift of free will. My belief is that every faith-based woman in her own body, in her own spirit, should be encouraged and permitted to make a decision about birth control on her own. Morgan discovered in her prayer life that birth control is not right for her. I just heard him, you know, felt it in my spirit, him saying, you don't trust me with everything in your life because you're still using contraception. Lizzie, in her prayer life, believes that Catholic tradition should be honored. I've been with my boyfriend for three years and we don't have sex. I think you should never have sex unless you're ready to be a dad or a mom. I myself am open to life, but I am taking every precaution to not get pregnant. And if you are in financial or relational turmoil, natural family planning or leaving it up to God may not be suitable for you. You may need to take extra precautions to make sure your finances and your family are safe. And please watch my video on this because I do detail side effects and complications of birth control. But again, my whole mission is to empower the God is Great community to make decisions from their own prayer life and to lean into education. Education is empowering. It empowers you to make wise decisions with your body, with your sexuality, with your health. Because truly, the less terminations that people suffer, the happier I will be. And that's it. Lizzie's gonna watch this video and then we're gonna talk it all out for you next week. If anyone has any thoughts, questions, rebuttals, whatever, leave it kindly in the comment section. Let's get some conversation going. I will read all of those comments and Lizzie and I will try to address them in next week's video. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, donate to my Patreon or Venmo if you can. I love you all. God bless.